Leadership is our coaching topic for today. Building better leaders builds better businesses. Someone has to lead a business. And if you are an owner or a manager of a small business, I'm talking directly to you. I invite you to play the leadership game and start by getting out a notebook and a pencil. And we're going to talk about the 10 attributes of a leader. And you're going to rate yourself from one to 10. 10 being your rock star when you need some more. Attribute number one is vision. Great leaders keep the vision at the forefront. Number two, communication. It is a fundamental tool of any leader. Communication is also a make it or break it quality for any businesses. Healthy businesses communicate frequently in supportive and even challenging ways. Managers tend to tell rather than communicate. Communication is a give and a take. Being an authoritarian is not leadership. It tells rather than gives a distinction of true communication. Number three is emotional intelligence. It is needed because a follower needs to be met where they're at today. Often I see leaders attempt to meet followers where they want them to be and not where they're currently at. The failure is in the perception. Using emotional intelligence brings the leader back to a service platform. Understand emotional intelligence is really important here. Number four is collaboration. It is very important quality in leadership. Great leaders invite differing opinions and ideas. They listen. Number five, make quick decisions. It's a key quality for inspiring leaders. No one follows a leader who can't make a choice or a decision. Decisive leaders instill confidence. Number six, walk your talk. A leader gets to set an example, molds the culture, and lives the values that they want to set for the company and the employees to work with. Walking your talk is part of the integrity and being instilled within the organization. Number seven, service needs to be the goal for any leader. Leaders lead from the front. However, they also, from time to time, will have to lead for the, from the rear and support those that are straggling behind. You win or lose as a team. Being of service to the team is pivotal for a leader. Number eight is commitment to the vision. The business, the employees, the stakeholders, and the customers are all part of that role. Commit to it, commit to it. Number nine, great leaders delegate. No one can do it all. No one has, is a genius in every task that needs to be done. So share the wealth. Make use of the talent that surrounds you. And the last one is all leaders need to train. You need to sharpen your skills and you need to sharpen the skills of your team. Now that you have your ratings, choose one or two attributes that you would like to improve. Figure out who, how, why, and when, and where you're gonna take it from. If you're at a five, do you want it to be a six, seven, or eight? How are you gonna do that? Every industry has top leaders to learn from. Continual improvement is the skill set that is really important here. If you want to know more, v2e.biz. You're tuned in to Big Ideas Small Business with Doreen Milano. Doreen brings energy, focus, and creativity with the most cutting-edge tools and systems needed to grow business, drive profits, and achieve dreams. Ready to rise? Here's your host, Doreen Milano. Welcome to Big Ideas Small Business, and I'm speaking today to Jennifer Marcus. And I met Jennifer not too long ago, and she is a true entrepreneur. How many businesses do you have? It's up to nine now. Wow. So let's talk about those businesses. Absolutely. The original idea started years ago. I started with Mar Palms because I realized how many entrepreneurs, small business owners, and just individuals were being taken advantage for things that they needed, accounting, bookkeeping, taxes, they were getting taken over the coals, literally, with prices that they could not afford. And so they would in turn go out of business. So I wanted to create a concept where I could give them these services at an affordable price, and as they grew, I grew with them. So that's where it started. And then from there, I wanted to do the same so thing. So that was just the, the bookkeeping, taxes, <clears throat> piece of it. So that's where I started with business because business had always been my first love. Right. I love everything business. So I wanted to give back there. 
Then from there, it kind of went into fashion. I don't know where it came from. I had never been a fashion person, but that's where it went to. But I wanted to give women... I noticed that a lot of the women were taking money from bills, robbing Peter to pay Paul to buy an outfit for an event or just to have something nice. And I wanted to give them a way that they could still have that outfit without those price tags. So I created j -Prief. Awesome. And then from there we grew. Of course, you need to go with the outfit. You needed jewelry. Uh -huh. So I tried to do the same thing and still keeping with the quality. I mean, that is the big thing I stand by is I want everything to be quality. Maybe at an affordable price, but I w it's not going to be inferior quality. So now we have taxes, we have bookkeeping, and we have women's clothing, and we have the jewelry line that goes with it. Right? Correct. So that's four. So there's five more businesses, ladies and gentlemen. So the next one is? The next three are about to launch within the next two months. One of which is Paint Me Sassy, which is a nail wrap company. However, we also have our own line of gel nail polishes, dip polishes, and accessories to go with it. Wow. So that's going to be fun to really round out. You can get your clothes, your nails, and your jewelry all in one place. So that continues with the building self. Wow, that's great. Then, then, in addition, a lot of the men are saying, okay, what about us? So we had added in some men's jewelry into Bo Diamante. However, we had, didn't have men's clothes. So in July, we will officially roll out the men's line. <gasps> wow. So that is coming very soon. We, are, we already have the inventory. It is beautiful. So we can get dressed. Our husbands can get dressed. We can get sassied up with the jewelry. They can get decked out. And it's all done under one roof and one place. Under one roof. Very cool. Then we also wanted to create a place that not everybody has a large forum or a place to do a podcast. So we wanted to create just a small place that individuals and small businesses could use to do a podcast. And that is going to be the first one to launch. That is actually going to launch on the 4th. And we're ready to welcome people in. It's just going to give, it doesn't take away from any business, just gives us other opportunities, other places to use. And th all of these businesses with the exception of Mar Palms, are done under one, the One Wing brand. And I always say with the One Wing br brand is it's essentially bringing businesses to you and companies to you that matter. Because these all matter, whether it's personal or business. So let's talk a little bit about my coaching moment today. And let's talk about what was the vision in building all of this? The vision was in being able to help and give back. You know, we, we see all these conglomerate businesses, and yes, they're able to employ large numbers, but when you really get to the heart of it, it's the entrepreneurs, it's the individuals, the small businesses is what really is making business grow. Absolutely. And if we do not take care of them, as well as there are more and more women in these roles now, and when you talk to them, they still have these esteem issues. So, but if we can give them the opportunity to have nice clothes, have jewelry, to improve their self-image, they glow everywhere they go. So that's going to grow their business, which is going to inspire others in business, and then we can continue to grow these small businesses as we're also raising up each other. That's beautiful. So when we talk about the vision, it's a set vision, it and is. that's how we've grown to nine businesses Right. It is. And I'm really happy that you've created the One Ring brand that is going to round everything together. Absolutely. And um, that's something that you and I talked about we a did. long time ago. We did. And I'm really happy to see that happening because now it is more cohesive. Right. From my perspective. It pulls it all together between the marriage, between the personal as well as the business and really encompassing everybody because they all have the same purpose. So what's on the horizon? How, how is this going to develop as time goes on? 
Well, right now, we, on May 5th, the Jay Preve commercial played in Times Square. So that Congratulations. was, that was very wonderful. exciting. That's very exciting. We're looking to do commercials under the one wing soon, which we can then encompass all of it and do commercials on a larger scale in New York as well as in Los Angeles. Um, my director of marketing has been working with both of those areas to do that, as well as just continuing to listen to all of the individuals out there of what their needs are, where they need us to grow to meet those needs for them. Because that's what I try to do. If, if I know there's a need, that's what I want to meet. I want to meet that need for them. That is exciting. I love business. I that's where too. you and I connected, is business. Well, and one of the neat accolades for business becomes that last company. We now have a company that makes metal business cards. I know for me as an entrepreneur, when I got to a level, I was like, I want those metal cards. But you look online to get them and they're $100, they're $500 for 100 of them. And as an entrepreneur or an individual owner, that's not in the budget. So we created a company that can print on, etch, or engrave metal business cards so you can walk around promoting your business and elevating your business the way you want to do it. Wow. And that is number nine then, right? That is number nine. How awesome. In fact, you and I are gonna do business because I need some new business cards. Absolutely. <laughs> that's, that's beside the point. The, the creativity that has gone into developing each of these businesses, these nine businesses under the One Wing brand and the tax and, and bookkeeping business has, is amazing. And how were you able to keep all those things straight? Well, the first thing I would say is... Because that's a lot of balls in the air. It is. And I use a theory, you know, we used to say people don't go by it anymore, but it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. It takes a village to raise a company. I agree And with that. I have lots of other people I would consider business partners in a way that give me great information that help with my growth. I have great employees that get in the trenches and help me get these visions out and get it the way that I'm seeing it in my mind. And without these other companies that are supporting me and behind me and without my employees, it wouldn't be possible. Right. I, I'm one person, I'm not a one woman army. This is true. But I have my army which is making it possible for me. Now I've been to events where you're there. Absolutely. And you come with literally trunks and trunks and trunks of merchandise. Mm -hmm. And then you have a team that unlatches all these trunks and pulls out all the merchandise and lays it out on tables and does these great presentations. And I am always in awe because they all know what goes where, how it gets put together. And that has everything to do with the training behind the brand. And it goes one step further. I have always, I've been in management since I was 16. So when you talk about the skills of a leader, I'm with you 100% because you should not be a manager, you should be a coach, you should be, mm -hmm. there's so many other roles you should be. So when I bring in an employee, they're not just my employee, every one of my employees has stock in at least one of my businesses. Because I want them to run it as if it's theirs. And how do you do that? You make it theirs. Mm -hmm. Because they care then. And that's what I've tried to do. So each of my employees, that's part of their business too. So, Absolutely. So that's why they know all the products. They know the pricing. They know the standards because it's theirs as well. And you're the vision behind all of that. I would say yes. I mean, of course, like I said, I listen to where there's the need as well. So I would say the community the is also a great driving force in where I go next. That's understood. You have to have a market or else it never, it never works out, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. So we are going to continue this conversation in just a moment. We're going to hear from our sponsors. We'll be right back. What is the role of American government anyway? Is the role of government to decide where I can go and where I can't? 
is the role of government to work tirelessly to destroy vital infrastructure that keeps goods and services from my customers? Is the role of government to choose who can drive, fly, or ride according to mandated stipulations that threaten my body, health, mind, and conscience? Without medical freedom legislation in place, our rights and freedoms are one vote away from being dissolved. Individually, change is improbable, but as an aggregate, attainable, it's time to act with one voice. My voice. And my voice. And my voice. And my voice. To protect our freedom, creating one voice that cannot be ignored. This requires your voice, too. Your voice, your feet, your vote, not just at the ballot box, but training to be a poll watcher, precinct chair, judge, or early ballot counter, so you are doing all you can to protect the fairly counted American vote. Move Freely America. Go to movefreelyamerica.org to find a chapter near you. Plug in, donate, and help our legislators defend our God-given rights under the Constitution. Move Freely America. Because my voice and my voice, together with your voice, we're one voice that cannot be ignored. Donate today. MoveFreelyAmerica.org. Interested in starting a podcast or TV show? Worried about what you'll say and how to keep it engaging? Think you'd like to be a guest on podcast, radio, or TV shows? Hi, I'm Susan Hamilton, owner and founder of OBBM Network, and I would like to invite you to an OBBM media training to get the tools you need for a relaxed and polished performance you'll be proud to share. Our specialized training techniques include role play, voice training, and everything you need to deliver a confident, clear, and engaging interaction. Go to offbeatbusiness.com. Go to the calendar and register for a training that's convenient for you. Dates available now, 214-714-0495. Team building strategies and why they matter. Brought to you by Visions to Excellence. Be aware of how you work. As the leader of your team, you must be extremely aware of your leadership style and techniques. Get to know the rest of your team. Make sure you have invested the time to understand how they think and what is required to motivate them to excel beyond what is expected. Clearly define roles and responsibilities. Each of your team members' responsibilities must be interconnected and dependent upon one another. Give feedback. This should be proactive and constant. The key is communication. Acknowledge and reward. Being genuine in your recognition and respect goes a long way towards building loyalty and trust. To learn more, visit visionstoexcellence.com. Thanks for watching. Welcome back. And we're continuing our conversation with Jennifer Marcus. And Jennifer, when you decided to start growing your business, I'm sure you put together a team of advisors to help you out. Where did you start? Because I know we have a lot of business owners out there that want to be able to grow their businesses and they don't quite know what the next step is. I would say the first thing I did really is you have to look at other businesses that do it that are successful and those that are not. Then once you have that idea, then you take that to your base, you know, your employees, other people within the business realm that don't necessarily do that business, but would it be something they could stand behind? Is it something that there's a need for? Is it something that is price conscious to do? Mm -hmm. And then once you have those answers, then you can start developing, okay, how am I going to do this? Right. And then that becomes a totally different set of people that can help execute that. Where am I going to get the product from? How much of the product can I get? What is the cost? You know, right now we have issues with getting things in. Can I even get the product I need in? And so you're talking about different groups. It's not one, it's multiple that you go through because you want to ensure if you're creating a business, you want to ensure that business is still going to be here three months, six months, a year, five years, 10 years. Right. So when, when you started this process, did you have a commercial banker that you were working with to make sure you had the lines of credit that you needed to make, make things happen? No. And I'm going to explain why. My theory when it came to business, I learned early on, 
you know, with through my degrees as well as working in management for different businesses, I learned the fastest way for a business to fail is to have too much business debt that they cannot sustain through. Okay. So when I started, I would say more so with Jay Preve because it was the first one with true inventory, I paid 100% of the inventory out of pocket. I don't have any bank loans. I don't have commercial loans. I don't have credit cards under the business that are not paid off monthly. Everything is done 100% paid. Awesome. So I didn't have to go that route, and I didn't want to go that route because I did not want that to be the hindrance of why my business failed. Understood. So you bankrolled your business. Yes, I did. Uh, businesses. Absolutely. Right. Yes, I did. And so when you, when you start thinking about the expansion piece, mm -hmm. did you sit down and do your budgets ahead of time so you made sure you had enough cash flow to make things happen? Absolutely. That When I said you need to make sure your costs, how much is the product going to cost to get in, how much is it going to cost to convert the product to what you need it to be, how much is it going to cost to market it, that has to all be taken into account if you're self-financing because if you, don't, if you take every dime you have and put it into doing that, especially when you have other businesses, do you still have the money you need for your other businesses to continue to grow and run? Which means that cash flow analysis on those businesses, especially the one that was doing really well, mm -hmm. had to be done on a continual basis to make sure there was enough funding internally Absolutely. to make those things happen. Absolutely. That, that is an important factor of any business. I don't care whether it's just one or multiple. If do you, you know don't. how many businesses don't run cash flow analysis? <sighs> Unfortunately, I do. <laughs> and that is the most... That, I would say, is even more important than the business plan because mm -hmm. you can do the business plan later. You can do a SWOT analysis at any point in time because you do it continuously anyway. But if you don't do a cash flow analysis, you don't even know can you pay your employees month to month. That's true. That's and, very true. And I know my employees like to get paid, so I'm sure everybody's do. I'm sure they do. But there are companies out there that rob Peter to pay Paul on a continual basis and don't understand what they need to do to actually get ahead of that curve. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things that we work with all the time. I'm sure that's something that you've had to deal with Absolutely. in building all these businesses. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, when you build a business, you don't expect it to be cash rich no. at the moment that you build it. So how long have you given yourself to have those businesses prove out and get to the point of being profitable? I would say that depends. On my service businesses, it's a shorter. You usually do a year because you should see a return on investment almost immediately in your service because it's based on your time and right. not any product you have to get in or additional costs you have to get in, other than basic marketing. My theory is on the other businesses, I prefer organic growth. So I do a three-year plan only because okay. I want that organic growth. I'm sorry, if I do a fire sale and everything shoots up, it's going to shoot right back down. Absolutely. One, can I get in enough inventory back in to meet the demand? No. Two, if it goes back down, then I'm only as good as how much I'm advertising or how much I'm doing at that moment. But if it's organic, even when it hits a plateau, I can then do a little bit more advertising or a little bit more di different things right. to gain that audience back and grow it up a little more and then let it plateau again. And then you see that growth where you can sustain your inventory, where you can bring in the new things, because when you hit that plateau, it becomes a good time to shake up your inventory a little bit, add some new things in, re-get that attention, that excitement. Very exciting. So, yeah, I, I think that's the advantage, but unfortunately, in the beginning, it is that slow growth. So, Jennifer, I know you. You know me. Absolutely. We're both numbers ladies. Absolutely. And we live and die by the numbers. Absolutely. So, when we look at growing businesses, mm -hmm. and we look at cash flow, and we look at profitability, cash flow doesn't equal profitability. No. 
You and I both understand that. Absolutely. Our audience may or may not understand that. But cash flow is not profitability. Profitability is a different animal. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about profitability, what elements are you most interested in in making sure that business starts turning that profit? I would say as a rule I use, and it's an older principle, I use the four times rule with my inventory. Um, I like that because you continuously have inventory, you're continuously gaining. Yes, it's a smaller profit, but if you're getting one fourth, if you're getting one times the cost of everything you sell as a profit, as that grows and that inventory multiplies, that's going to end up being four times, eight times, 10 times, 12 times. So it becomes that small growth, but that profit, not just that cash flow, because the cash flow, like you said, so you're it's talking just about margins the there. It's the margin. It's, it's that the profit margins. margin that you want to see start to turn and climb and turn and climb the more you sell. So how many turns a year are you trying to do with your inventory? I am, my attempt is, well, it's a little different in each business. Right. Let's take the jewelry, for example. In the jewelry, I would love to turn each item at least two to three times. A year. A year. Because that gives a good profit margin as well as you don't want to sit with the same inventory. You want that inventory to change. It needs to be fresh. People get tired of seeing the same thing. I get tired of seeing the same thing. But if you're turning it two to three times a year, that gives you. In the clothing business, of course, everybody will tell you you want to see it turn quarterly mm -hmm. because you want the seasonals in right. and out. You don't want to have last season's spring come back out next spring. So you want to turn it quarterly. So it depends upon the business, unfortunately. Business cards, you're not going to really, they don't really turn as much no. as sell. So it depends upon the business. But I would say more so, it, if you're using the four times rule and turning it at least two to three times, your profits are going to start jumping. So it's important. The lesson here is paying attention to your margins. Absolutely. Not your cost, but your margins. Right. In order to get the profitability turning within the business. Correct. So we're going to take a moment. We're going to go back to our sponsors, and we'll be right back. Thank you. Team building strategies and why they matter. Brought to you by Visions to Excellence. Be aware of how you work. As the leader of your team, you must be extremely aware of your leadership style and technique. Get to know the rest of your team. Make sure you have invested the time to understand how they think and what is required to motivate them to excel beyond what is expected. Clearly define roles and responsibilities. Each of your team members' responsibilities must be interconnected and dependent upon one another. Give feedback. This should be proactive and constant. The key is communication. Acknowledge and reward. Being genuine in your recognition and respect goes a long way towards building loyalty and trust. To learn more, visit visionstoexcellence.com. Thanks for watching. This is the transaction you've been looking forward to. Your client is getting a great deal. It's time to go to the title company and sign the closing documents. Deadlines must be met for funding to happen so the buyer can get the keys. Call me, Lisa Harbell, at 469-914-2686 for quick underwriting decisions, in-house attorneys, and up-to-date technology to ensure an efficient closing. We're DFW's Secured Title of Texas Solution for 1031s, commercial properties, residential purchases, and equity loans, and more. A proper title search ensures taxes and mortgages have been paid, there are no judgments against the seller, and the restrictions are in line with planned use. Secured Title of Texas makes it easy for you to move forward with organized title experts who protect lenders and home buyers from liens and defects in title or actual ownership of the property. Call me, Lisa Harvell, with Secure Title of Texas at 469-914-2686. Get it done right, get it done on time, 469-914-2686. Welcome back. Jennifer, let's talk more about 
your inspiration, what it means to you, and then how we get a hold of you. Absolutely. I would say what it means to me is everything. When I set my goal to help people, and I'm doing that through every one of my businesses, whether it's the discounts in clothing, whether it's bringing the quality jewelry at the low prices, helping small businesses, whether it's through the podcast, the video casts, the business cards, or the accounting, that helping is what drives me. That's what fuels me. And the more I can do that, the more fuel I have to continue to do it. It also excites me to bring The more businesses I grow, the more employees I can bring in. The more people I can then inspire to do theirs and get them just as excited in business as I am. How fun is that? It is the best thing ever, to be honest. It really is. And that's That's when you go from being a manager to a coach. Yeah. It really is. So how can people get a hold of you? Well, you can get a hold of me at jmarcus at marcusbrands.com as an email. Of course, the sites, we have jprieve.com, bowdiamondante.com. The other ones are paintmesassy.com is coming soon, as well as onewingstudios.com and onewingstill.com are also coming soon. So we have all the different websites. We have the emails and metal business cards are floating all over the place. So if you get your hands on one, it has all of that information as well as a list of all the businesses on it so you can't miss it. How exciting. So what is going to be the 2023 focus for I think the 2023 is not as much growing more businesses per se, but growing my people within my businesses. I want them to all be owners. I want them to have that same feeling and that get more entrepreneurs out there that are excited about what they do. So continuing to grow people. So let me ask you this. Because I'm really curious. Every business I talk to has an employee problem. They can't get them. They can't keep them. And they're having a hard time training the people that they get. Mm -hmm. I'm not hearing that from you. Well, you're not. And let me tell you why. Remember I said, every one of my employees is an owner in at least one of the businesses. If you own a business, are you going to leave that business? Hopefully not. They don't tend to leave as more. They're invested. They want to be there. They want to grow it because that's part of their, partly theirs too. So this is how you solved that problem. Absolutely. And it has done you well for the last how many years? Eight years. Wow. Is when we started Mar Palms. So that tells me that there's a strategy that creates longevity that also creates, I'll say this lightly, golden handcuffs. In a way. I mean, I hate to think it because I don't want anybody to feel trapped, right. but I want them to feel that ownership and take that ownership in what they do and that excitement and grow that. Which means that in order for them to stay engaged, they have to be collaborating with you and with the other owners of the business group Mm -hmm. in order to stay on top of what's coming up next. Absolutely. They work through it daily and they work with it daily. So how many people are on the team at this point? Right now we have seven. We have a few remote and few local, so right now there is a total of seven. Wow. Looking to probably grow that a couple more here soon, but that's where we're at right now. So exciting. Absolutely. You know, I've wanted to have you here for, God, over a year. (laughs) And I am so glad that we were able to align our schedules so that you could be here for this. Absolutely. I enjoyed being here. I always love sitting down and talking with you. Your information is just as great as mine. Anybody that doesn't know you needs to know you. (laughs) Because literally, I'm the type of person where I never stop learning. Neither do I. And so when I get around people where I can absorb... I love to absorb. That's awesome. Well, that's part of sharpening the sword. Absolutely. Always learning. We've got to always be learning. Absolutely. And never never turn our back on the opportunity to learn more. No. No. Absolutely not. 
This is a great segment. There's a lot of great information here. You have come up with some brilliant strategies to really help grow your business. And I think this is going to be really valuable for the business owners out there. You know, I really hope it is because I, my goal is to, I want everybody to be successful. It's no fun when you play at the top by yourself. No, it's not. We all need to go play together. I have a saying as every business owner's owner deserves to have their business be an absolute success. Absolutely. You have that right. You have that ability to deserve that. Yes, I do. You have to, it's not easy. You got to work through it. It's not a piece of cake. Nope. 16 hour days and sometimes work. sweat work. and pain. <laughs> yeah. But it's worth it. It is so worth it to see, to look and see not just the business and the money. I'm, it's not about the money. It's about seeing something you did. And then yeah. your employees to see their faces when they're excited about it. And then to see them grow theirs, that's where the excitement And is. then it's a team accomplishment. Absolutely. And, you know, when one gets a really great accolade, everybody wins. Yes, they do. Right? It's yes, not, they it's do. It's not about mine didn't get it. It's about... We're all working together yeah. as a team. One got it. We, we are all one. Yeah. Under one wing. Beautiful. Well, do you have a word of ins inspiration for our audience today? I would say never give up. You know, there's many times, even with myself, where early on I wanted to give up. Even times more recently where you say, you know... If I just went to back to a nine to five, I would have more time. But when you sit and look at it, it is such a difference in the way you feel when it's something you did. So just don't give up. Keep pushing forward. Keep striving, knowing that you actually can and are better than the opportunities you're limiting yourself to. Absolutely. I would 100% agree with that. Great way to land the show. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you all for listening. Talk to you soon. Hey, Doreen Milano here. You already know the squeeze family businesses have in acquiring new talent. You could also be feeling that very same squeeze when it comes to growing your business and gaining new clients. What if I told you there was a way to become the employee of choice in your field? How would you like more cash flow, more clients who love you, and employees who feel great working with you and your clients. I've helped hundreds of family-owned businesses just like yours who are now reaping the benefits of plentiful cash flow, increased revenue in the millions, employees who love where they work, and loyal clients. I've spent over 30 years developing the tool chest and working in the corporate space, helping companies of all sizes attain maximum profitability. You are not wrong or at fault the struggle in family business is very real. Your business needs more cash flow, more profits, more leads, and happy employees. Spending the last 12 years working with family businesses, I've been upgrading and proving that these strategies actually work. The system is based on several key strategic components around people, strategies, process, and profits. I'm sharing my strategies with the owners of family businesses who want an edge in today's challenging market without having to reinvent the wheel. If you want to know more, go to v2e.biz or give me a call at 650-483-5798.